if you were to go online and Google rich Lux, you would see that a lot of people believe that you're a racist. Why be associated with someone who's known to be possibly racist and then you've got your own spiel. So it's like, uh, it's like kind of doing yourself dirty. I want to talk a little bit about your relationship with Jeffrey Star. Being even associated with him, it drags me down even further, oh, right? And it, it haunts me, but I'm like, but I'm happy. Why did you make that video? Did you make it because you wanted to get views? Yeah, this is where I messed up, but like, this is who I am and I'm working through that. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Let's Get Into It podcast, hosted by me, Sloan, where we discuss the dark side of the Hollywood industry and we confront controversy. Today, we are joined by drama channel and beauty investigator, Rich Lux. Ooh, Did I say it right? Yeah. Rich Lux. How yes. are you doing, Rich? I'm, I'm apprehensive, but I'm here. I know. Are you yeah. scared? I'm scared, too. Thank you for having me. I know. I'm so excited to have you I'm just you here. happy to be part of your project. And just to support you. Yeah. But I don't know what's going on. So. Even though you're super familiar with LA, you're from Texas, so you're yeah, visiting yeehaw. right now. Yeah, and the Houston. timing just worked out great. It so. did, yeah. Everything works out for a reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. Some 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 of the stuff. And you know, <laughs> and honestly, I haven't been in the YouTube sphere or in uh -huh. social media that yeah. long, but you've been in it for a very oh, long time. I think almost five to eight years. I, for, I forget. <laughs> I forget. I forget. No, I forget. Yeah. I seen it all. Yeah. But I was watching before I got into it too. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Thing. So that's why every time you ask me, I'm like, oh, you haven't done it for 10 years. Ask me yeah. next month. 15 years because it gets mm -hmm. longer. I just I was watching for so long that I started doing it. Yeah. yeah. And you guys know I, I don't typically hold back. And when you're on social media, you start to build a reputation for yourself. And if you were to go online and Google Rich Lux, you would see that a lot of people believe that you're racist. Yeah. So, the good, the bad, I, and the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's a few different controversies I want to talk about through this video. And I want to get to know who you are. But... To start off, Rich Lux, are you racist? No. If I was racist, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here with, you, with me, filming. but I'm white. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not racist. Like that's a that's something that really hurts because it's not true. You yeah. Know? And it sucks because it just takes you can have like a really good run and it takes like that one person saying something about you or that one instance or mm -hmm. that stupid thing you said or did when you were younger and it just haunts you. And yeah. I just have to keep striving and proving that that's not who I am. And, and just I like grew remind from yourself that. I grew who from you that. are and and I get like I get that. People say things about us all the time and most of the time they don't hurt, but when they are untrue they do hurt. Yeah. And the thing is like I'm I'm Spanish, so I'm Mexican, I'm Puerto Rican, I mm -hmm. grew up in the hood, I came from nothing. So like talking derogatory in high school from a low income area, it just kind of happens. You just, yeah. you, I'm surrounded from that. But my hood is different from everyone else's hood. Yeah. You know, because some people were like, well, I grew up in the hood and we didn't talk like that. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, yeah, but come on, girl. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in the country. So, and I think, like you mentioned, there are certain moments and certain things that have happened through the years. And those moments, they linger. And it, it sucks because even when I posted a picture of you on my YouTube, it's like so many people were like, he's a racist, he's a racist. So I just <laughs> want to like quickly talk about like a like an instance. So yeah. there was a situation where you were quoted saying, if he was, if he was racist, there's nothing wrong with being racist. Being racist is frowned upon. No one likes a racist, but last time I checked, it's not illegal to be yeah. racist. It's not illegal to be racist, but I think a lot of people think racism is wrong. So It is wrong. And a lot of people have grabbed onto this quote and they've stuck it with you. So yeah. can you just give me a little context? Like, I believe you're speaking about Jeffrey Star in this instance. Correct? Yeah, because Jeffrey Star was being called out for, mm -hmm. for some stuff like that. And so my thing when I made the video it was one of those things that I make videos every single day. Yeah. Okay. And when you make content every single day, they're going to be slip ups. They're going to be things that you're like, oh, I wish I didn't say that. But it happens when you film every day. Yeah. Because I, I film, edit, upload it, film like that. And every we're growing day. up, we're learning. And, and so, in but that I've moment, learned, like, I don't want people to be like, oh, feel sorry for him. No, like, I understand. Like, I got dragged to the yeah. mud. Like, oh, I and got you canceled. have. I've been canceled. Oh my God, I've been Oh, I know. Times. We're going to go through them. So, Ugh. so that's kind of the context of the situation. You were speaking about Jeffrey, and um, I guess your point was being racist isn't illegal, but by using that phrase, being racist yeah. isn't wrong, that's what you're alluding to is it being illegal opposed to it because it is wrong. It is wrong. 
Exactly. And I don't agree with it. And I think, you know, I didn't come from the best school. So sometimes when I speak, it just doesn't come out the way I wanted it to come yeah. out. And I, I'm not the sharpest, most colorful crayon in the box or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's one of the things I just kind of be like, I don't regret it, though. I'll yeah. tell you why. Because it made me smarter. Yeah. Than, yeah. You know, like, you learned something I learned from, from that. It. And you know what? It sucks that it is something that will be brought up. But I think you handling it with grace is I important. I went through a lot, bro. I know. Like, I mean, even like a few months ago, um, Adam McIntyre, you know, you oh, know, he brought, brought up a little bit of this too. He, and it, it brought it up and I it was all so over again. upset because I was in that moment. I was just like, I can't believe th this is what really happened. Like when I saw it. Yeah. And it, you Did know, your what, stomach sink when you just saw that? Like butterflies. It's yeah. weird. It, it's like when I saw it, I thought like, I thought I moved past this, but it's still here. And I was instantly brought back to that cancellation moment where everyone's talking about it and commenting and, and it kind of threw me for a loop but in reality it wasn't that big of a deal when he did it but i was kind of like thrown back into that it's it's so weird like no i get that how how you're just you, i felt what was happening a couple years ago happening again and yeah. i didn't want that to happen so i made the video and i think i wanted to address it right off the bat just because i personally don't think you are racist and i think it's something that like the People are going to click on this video and they're going to say, why are you doing this as racist? OK, well, we address that right away. And it's something that if you've taken accountability and you've learned from it, then, you know, why are we stuck on it? So I totally get that. And I, there's been, you know, there's been a long history of you on YouTube. Like you said, you've started yeah, what, a long time, at least eight years ago yeah, or so, I'll five say. years ago. Why did you start making videos? I started making videos because I was working at a chemical plant in the hometown passing Pasadena, Texas. I'm okay. overalls, hard hat. Oh, wow. We're doing scaffold building. So how old were you at this point? Like in your early Woo! 20s? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It, it was just, it was a, a job. If you are in that field, it, it, they call shutdowns. Mm -hmm. So it's um, six days a week, 12 hours a day. You get that one so day So you're off. working hard out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And then I had no outlet for creativity. Mm -hmm. So I made a documentary film called Drag Houston where I followed uh, transsexuals, gay people, drag queens mm -hmm. all around Houston and documented their lives. And I put that on YouTube. And that's when I got little, little views. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like I've found my creative outlet. And then um, I just started making daily videos. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. You know, it was always like die, kill yourself, fag, yeah. stuff like that. And but I found like my little community mm -hmm. is by expressing myself. And I had like no friends. I've always been that fat kid, you know what I'm saying? Like just so, did my own thing. And so that's how I started because I needed a creative outlet. Would you say creating videos so it's very personal and it's for you in a sense? Yeah. So one of your uh, first viral videos was about Nikita Dragon denying a disabled fan a yeah. photo. Did you, why did you make that video? Did you make it because you wanted to get views or did no, you make it? I made it, it because to... the community was saying, look at this. Like, we need you so to talk about this. So people were sending it this. to you and asking yeah. you to talk about and it. And as a creator, you, I'm pretty sure you get people say, you need to talk about this. Did you see this? And it was kind of like that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to talk about it. Did not know I was going to get a million views. Did not know that. And it, that from that video on, I ended up running into Nikita Dragon years later. Uh -huh at um, the Blondes Fashion Show in New York City, and we're on the red carpet, and she saw me, but she was like, like that. she didn't speak to me. It was so weird. And I went up to her, I was like, hi. Oh, okay. mm. She messaged me the next day, and she was like saying, hey, I, I just wanna let you know I saw you. I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just going through something. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But like, so I'm not I trying to come for you on this one, but you made it. So I don't know. Cause I was hoping you were going to say like, oh, I just saw this disabled fan who was like treated incorrectly. And I just felt like she didn't have a voice and I wanted to go and make a video to stand up for her. But that's not it. You did it because people wanted to talk about it and you want to get the It was a hot in. topic at the okay. moment. No, I'm not going to lie. Like, it was a hot topic at yeah. the moment. I believe the fan, that fan, the subscribers reached out to me. They were saying, thank you so much for yeah, this so video. Yeah. So people really appreciate it. And then it. she ended up reaching out. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay. And, that's and it was like a big deal at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, you got a hell of views all of that. <laughs> so um, I, I think like when people first see you, they obviously see there's like this whole get up. You've got this whole outfit. You've got your look. You've got your, you know, your lifestyle in Texas. And, you know, Texas is great because um, it's affordable to live in, but yes. it's not that affordable. And you obviously live a very flashy life. So yeah. How do you afford your life? Are you, do you even afford it? Do you have like, have you maxed out like every single bank and every credit card? Call my what sugar is going daddy. on here? No, you know, no. I don't, I mean, we can all social blade and go from there, but yeah. um, how, how do you like, how do, do you it? maintain yeah. it all? And is it something that's always been 
a lifestyle you've been longing for because you you've talked well, about yeah. growing up poor and it's just like like I came from nothing. I t- I tell people that. So, so when you mean nothing though, what do you mean nothing? Like because like, my dad just, grew up in with an outhouse like that. Vibe, yeah. it's like no, but it's just like um, I didn't grow up with money. Yeah, I you get know that. what I'm saying. Like my parents was like working class. They had to work every single day, which is why I post every single day. It was like instilled to me to work. Yeah, grow and it's always joke about this. But growing up as being gay, you're told to work. RuPaul tells you to work. Uh, Rihanna tells you to work, work, work. Like just so many songs that just tell you to work and that's that's what i know to do and then it kind of keeps my mind off how crappy the world is when i'm just filming and working but because i came from like not having so much now that i'm able to do it it i just exacerbate that like let's go big well then do you spend everything that you get then like are you good at so you're not like necessarily a big saver oh no no No. okay girl no i mean no as long as you're honest with it too that's important and people roll their eyes to get so upset with me like you could have if you could see my closet, you could like you could have bought a house. I'm like, I yeah. know, and it, it haunts me. But I'm like, but I'm happy. With yeah, it. and that's fine. And it's obviously this is some type of coping mechanism for how you've grown up. And you know, and it's not saying that there's like a, a problem here, here, but, but like, no, I get oh that. But it, it happens, and Woo. it's like there's we all have our own things. Trust me, I have my things too. And it's also it's refreshing to see something like clearly like we can clearly see this is see a part it, of you yeah. this is a reflection of and you're owning that part of what it your took identity a long is time for me to to get to that yeah. to own up to it and be like yeah this is where i messed up but like this is who i am and i'm yeah. working through that so wait before we get a little emotional what's like the most expensive item in your like closet like do you even know like do you oh have- yeah i think it's like a thirty thousand dollar coat oh yeah <laughs> Oh, cute. It's Do you know which brand it is? Gucci. Or Gucci? Oh, yeah, my gosh. Uh, $10,000 ah. luggage. I um, have an obsession with, like, luggage pieces mm-hmm. and trunks. And, you know, their investment pieces. I can always sell that yeah. and get money back from it. That's yeah. actually a great lead so way into my next question. So people have brought up the fact that you've sold some bags before. I don't know if they're fake bags, if they're overpriced bags. Are you buying a bunch of bags from AliExpress oh. and then double doubling it? Like, what... I saw a few comments about this, but I wasn't really able to figure out. Understand? Yeah. So basically, in Houston, there's this there's a street called like Harwin, and you can buy like let's say earrings and jewelry and bracelets yeah. and shoes for like rock bottom prices. It's like it's, AliExpress, but on the AliExpress, street. AliExpress, but on the street. But you have to have a wholesale license. So you get a wholesaling license, and you mm-hmm. buy it in bulk, and then you can start like a Shopify or you can start like a like an online boutique. So what I was doing is I was buying like a whole bunch of these fun like I'm talking about this. The ridiculous like a pineapple purse and stuff yeah. like that right and it was like ten dollars but then you can you can buy that same bag online for like 30 or 40. where were you selling them like poshmark or something? yeah it was like poshmark depop yeah. stuff like that and they would sell it like that and i would autograph them and sign them and okay, i only, only had a little bit a small amount yeah and it was just and i would have them in my videos when i would walk in and i'm like oh guys you want to purchase this i'll sign it and i'll sell yeah. it to you it was almost like fan merch in that's a way that's smart but then some people looked at it as like From not as pond, not like yeah. a rich lux like collectible it was item ca- it was like capitalism to. in a yeah. way it's like you buy something for a small amount and then you sell it for more because that's what the market wants i mean but, that's what everyone honestly does with every single but on business. the internet it's like he's like oh yeah i can't believe that you're doing this and i got so angry i was mm-hmm. so frustrated because i was like i'm doing something that everyone else every small yeah. business does but yet when i do it it's like you're trying to say i'm scamming and that's like not the case well even though we have different content i feel like sometimes we I don't want to, I don't feel this way, but I feel like because of our content, we portray ourselves as moral authority. And it doesn't mean that we're always right or that we're always great people or great business people. Um, So finances is kind of a mess. When it comes to these assistants, like what's going on here? Are they assistants? Are they just friends that you're like, come with me? Are they even friends at all? Are these people you found on Facebook? Like, (laughs) let's talk about your most recent, like who's with us today. What, how did you find him? Um, so Elton's, mm-hmm. my sister, has been with me for four years. Okay. And it started off like I needed help. Mm-hmm. I, I, if you would have met me maybe four years ago, I was not okay emotionally, like, mentally. Overly worked. Just, it was overly worked because I was like, I need, to, I need to post. I got these videos. And I, I had no social life. And mm-hmm. I was just, it was just like laser focus on YouTube and posting content and drama. And it, it sucks because like I wasn't okay, you mm-hmm. know, because I was like so enthralled and the views and clicks yeah, and, and you numbers. couldn't stop like you can't just stop yourself because you it's, it's to... there it's like because you don't know when it's going to just turn off like youtube could be gone tomorrow yeah so i was really trying to capitalize on the momentum of the algorithm okay yeah. and i just wasn't okay and someone said you need an assistant you need help and i was like no i don't yeah. I, I think i can do it no but i needed one and then when i hired him on it was so difficult for me to delegate things to people mm-hmm. and tell them what to do because i'm not used to that yeah 
and slowly but surely, like I had someone like take care of the cats or take them to the vet just or like schedule normal, appointments, like uh, do the laundry or fold or order me an Uber or like, cause it was just so much. And it got to the point where I couldn't even speak. I would like just, my words were all jumbled up. That's how bad it was. Okay. And it slowly. And I know exactly I know what point. you mean. And you do? This cause not many July, people do like, I'm well, so sure. I know because I was working for the government and I was doing YouTube and I was editing myself. So I was working nine to five and then five to one every single day to get a video out the next day because I like to post like five times a week. We both love wow, to post. Yeah. And so I was doing both and I was like, I was actually going to go into a mental health facility, like one that was local and I was going to check in. But my lawyer friend, who's like a huge fan of your channel, um, that's you. the reason why I really started watching Rich. Like I literally watch Rich every single day because I just like, I need <laughs> oh, to have something playing in the background. And it's also just like comforting content. Um, but she like came down and she, she was like, you know, helped me like just – get the courage to leave my government job and to finally to make the embrace, jump. Yeah, yeah, the social media. So, but before Elton, you've had another assistant, correct? Yes. You've had a few? Yeah, well, they come and go. Like, I tell them, this is not a job that's going to, like, last you for. Yeah. You're not going to get rich You're not getting your 401k me. bill You're not going to get rich working for me. Like, like, take what you learned from me as a stepping stone and, and apply it to your own life and, and then move on, you know? And some people, they just have stayed longer than others, and some people, they stay for Who's a Who's been season. a previous assistant? Like, who, what, who, like a name, like, well, they the thing is like most of them, they prefer not to be on camera or like okay. be talked about. So, so luscious wasn't one right now. No, okay. no. That, the luscious thing was like a dear friend of yeah. mine that I hold, like that friendship was so dear to me, but you well, know, relationships change and they fall and fall Yeah. And that and happens. I totally get that. And I wish them the best and my success, but like, it's just, it's sad. And I just, I really do think it was just a misunderstanding, but. So yeah. who, um, who did you, who accu- there's someone who said that you called your assistant the N-word slur. I've seen that on the internet. Who, what's happened? Was it an assistant that came out and started saying some crap? No, Is it, made it wasn't like that. Is it something no. you did that you're like, it, I can't believe I did this? Like, No, it, it was like, um, what was it? So I can see the shift in your face when I'm no, like, No, because ah. I'm really trying to think because I don't want to get it wrong. So I had an assistant building an arcade. And then I was in the background making a drama video. Okay. And so when they're live building an arcade, the fans that were watching him, they were like, oh, we hear Rich in the background. And they thought they heard something I said that I didn't. And then I addressed it in the video oh. saying that's not what I said. And I even like recreated the moment. And they were like, oh, that's BS. No, you didn't. So I'm like, whatever. So did okay. they have audio of you saying, is that why they believe it? Yeah, it was like, like there's an audio, an audio but out there. Not, my face is not in it though. Yeah, it's just it's like, like someone like working live stream and you like supposedly said it, but in the you feel like yeah. it's maybe just like a speech, like it could have just sounded like it. It did sound like it, but I'm like, did the person no. who was in the stream react to you saying that? No, so it's they like, were just building an arcade. They would have been like, uh, if they heard you over here, like. But I think because I like, guess because I'm a drama channel, and I do drama. When I'm in drama, oh, it's like magnified times. Yeah. It's like, I can't believe that you did this. And yeah. You talk about these people. So you be, you should be able to dish it and serve it. Mm-hmm. Serve it and dish it. And yeah. personally, like I said, I don't think that you are racist. But um, I can't say the same for Jeffree Star. Do you think Jeffree Star is racist? I don't think he's racist. You don't? I, I'm really, like, I feel like he has, like, a really traumatizing past. Mm-hmm. And... Because, I mean, there's videos of him doing and saying things. And well, I'm just we've like, seen Whoa. that, yeah. And, and being even associated with him, it drags me down even further, oh, right? that was going to be a, a next question. Like, why be associated with someone who's known to be yeah. possibly racist? And then you've got your own spiel. So it's yeah, like, uh, it's like yeah. kind of doing yourself dirty. So I want to talk a little bit about your relationship with Jeffree Star because I think people are fascinated by this because you talk oh, about him, but you're I also have a lot to say. And then that, also yeah. there's like, you know, there's YouTube spheres and it seems like, you know, Jeffrey's in that like David Dobrik sphere where, and then we're on our own. It's kind of like hard to jump to that next level. So, um, can you just talk a little bit about like, what's your relationship with Jeffree Star nowadays? So like, are ha- you, well, I want to, I think it's important to how it started. Okay. So like, just imagine being a drama channel and you're uh-huh. pumping out daily content and out of all the YouTubers I was talking about, out of all the YouTubers that existed way like in the millions, Jeffrey was the only one to reach out mm-hmm. and say, hey, come meet me. It was did, he, he, did you make videos about him at this yeah, point when you reached yeah. out? Were they like hateful or in favor or just? No, I would say they were, they were commentary and in favor. Okay. It was like, I like this palette. Neutral oh, and I in can't favor. Believe. It was okay. controlling too. Mm-hmm. It was always like, for some reason, the algorithm favored him. He just got a lot of views. Yeah. A lot of he's views. been getting views since I've watched him since the MySpace days. So he's been getting views forever. It's almost like 
how does he do it? Well, now he's know? not. Have you seen his videos flopping lately? I know. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he reached out to he you. He reached out and- to you and was like, hey, I'm going to be in Houston. And, and there's like a tweet of him saying, oh, I'm going to meet Rich Lux. And I went to his hotel that day and we hung out and we talked. And when you meet these people, you tend to humanize them. Mm-hmm. Right. And he was like, the first thing he said is like, Rich, I'm not a racist. My manager was black. And, and I was just like, whoa. And we talked about it. I, I humanized them. And in some way, I felt like because I'm so like ostentatious and like, Louis Vuitton and stuff like that, and he yeah. does too. We kind of connected there yeah. with with that whole coming from humble beginnings, and then all of a sudden you have a little bit of wealth. You just kind of splurge and buy. So I kind of felt that mm-hmm. that, that bond, yeah, that you bond, to bond of like, over. You know, it's stuff like that. It's so like materialistic stuff, but but I when like we were it. so we were at a brand party recently for the the creme right creme shop. the creme shop yeah, and um when we went to this party, I asked you a little bit about Jeffrey and you told me that you haven't been able to like break that mold with him to where it feels like, cause I, when I was with you, it felt like it's two real people talking and there's not like this facade and stuff. Do you feel like you've ever even gotten to that point yeah. with Jeffrey where you can yeah, see? Yeah, there was, there was been, it's almost like, I'm like about you can this. tell when it's on, you can tell when it's off. Have you seen like when it's off yeah. and you're like, okay, this person's maybe not that confident, not that. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Cause okay. he comes across like a stone cold, like oh, all the time, you know, see, oh like a yeah. uh, millionaire stare it's almost like intimidating but there are times when we've hung out and he it just turned off there's a video on my channel where i'm in his closet yeah. and i'm filming his closet and he's talking about it when the camera shut off like we had a real moment yeah like he was saying i'm gonna move I think wyoming mm-hmm, yeah and, and, I, and i want to have yaks and i was like what this so he is... was planning that yeah i was just like no, you're not like in my head i'm thinking like no he was like oh look at the brush set i did with this uh i think it was a morphe collab and he was talking about that. And I was like, this is a genuine, real moment. Mm-hmm. And it was like a glimpse. And then it just went, like, it went away. And he was like, oh, and then let me, show oh, you, let me show you my name working. Interesting. It's very like, much. Uh, then he puts it back on. And, so, and that's like sometimes some but, people's coping mechanisms but I, are their guard. I, I think he's like that because, because he's worth so much money, people want to take advantage of him. Yeah. And then whatever trauma he has, he just feels like if I can just have a wall up, people can't get to me. But I saw the glimpses of like the real human person, and yeah. I'm like, wow, this is, this is, th- this gives me hope that you're a good person. So when you're I'm around him, that. does he pay for everything? No. No, you no. bought some things. I paid for dinner one time for him and his crew. Ooh. But he, he pretty much does pay for everything. Yeah. Unless you just intervene and stop it. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of. But you, you know, I, when I'm in Houston, like. I'm like the highest in the room there. Yeah. Like when like you're in your place, you're in your safe space. Yeah. So I always just tend to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. And when he comes to town, he probably does that too. But I was like, no, like let me handle the bill this time. Yeah. But yeah, but no, I think most of the time he does pay for everything. And I think that he has like people kind of ride that coattail. Yeah. Which is why he's such a cunning person when he cuts people off or slits their throat or whatever the case may be. What was Rich like Rich Lux like in high school? Fat. Overweight, what do you mean, like fat? Like, like 200 over, pounds, 300 pounds? I'm pushing like, like almost 300. 300. My weight How tall are you? Five foot nine. Five oh, ten, you look great five now. Ten, five ten, yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Look this cheap. Oh, yeah. you that. oh, no. <laughs> so, no. So in high school, you were overweight. Did that feed into your like confidence and stuff? Oh, or yeah. I had, you still I had like person, big old or? man boobs, bro. Yeah. I had like a, like a belly that hung over. Um, I didn't know if I was straight or gay. I was struggling mm. with that. Like, I wasn't like as flamboyant as I am today. Like, I was like, like cholo, masculine. <laughs> oh yeah, with the bandana, sagging dickies. Oh my like, god. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, did people know that you were gay in high school? Like, could they? They tell would ask. They it? would be like, "Are you gay?" And I was like, "No, I'm gay." No, 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 no. Yeah. It was it was like toxic masculinity back then. Did you ever get like bullied or anything? Or mm-hmm. did, were you pretty? Yeah, gay? because some of the guys they just like, "Oh, I know you're gay." Yeah. Are you gay? Right. No. Did your mama know you're gay? It was like that stuff yeah. growing up. Speaking of your parents, where are they? My dad, oh my God, my dad passed away of cirrhosis of the liver. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, that sucks. How long ago was that? Oh, year. It wasn't that recent. It was years ago. Yeah, yeah, but and, it never goes, you know. And when he goes. died, like, it didn't really phase me. I, I really didn't care when yeah. he died because he was such, like, a, a mean person. Really? So you didn't have a great child, like, hood with really, him? No. In the beginning, yeah, when you're a kid, I remember the good times, but mm-hmm. then, like, when he started getting sick, he wanted everyone else to to feel sick and uh, be miserable. Yeah, in to that get out house. Others. And he would like, you know, call me faggot and stuff like that. Yeah, he it would. wasn't the best in, in, environment, but when he died, I was like, all right, cool. And then like later on, it hit me and I was like, 
then you started to like grief it and mourn it. So when did he die? Like how, where were you in your life when he oh died? My. Were you working at the, like the chemical plant? Were you doing YouTube? What was going on? I was in the middle of doing a little bit of both, but YouTube didn't take off. It was more like daily vlogs. Nobody cared and we mm-hmm. watched. I came home at six o'clock in the morning. I worked the graveyard shift uh-huh. and um, you know, I was just in my room surfing YouTube. And then it was about seven o'clock. My mom came and she said, Richard, I need you to come to the room were they married at this point mm-hmm. or yeah okay. my mom was there my mom's a, uh, a nurse oh, okay uh and she asked me just very calmly can you come to the room help me with your dad and we went to the room and he was sitting on the toilet blue like this uh, like this like oh my god i'll never forget this moment i don't even know if i talked about this yeah but i saw my dad dead he was in the toilet naked you like, saw his physical body like that lifeless. all blue i've never oh seen a dead gosh. body before and um, oh, I had to grab him from the top part. My mom grabbed him by the feet, and we put him, laid him down on the floor. And um, you try to revive? No, no. She no. she said you could tell you, at that. She point. went like this, and she was like, you, you know, oh, yeah, she's a nurse. I need you yeah. to uh, call nine one one. And then I I called it, and for some reason, I just think it was real. I thought that he'll be fine. Like I was a young kid, I was like, he'll be fine, or whatever. Yeah. The police came, the ambulance came, took him to the hospital. A part of me was like, if he's dead, wow, like. This is all gonna change the torment, the yeah. drama, the 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 name calling. So the, at this point, it was almost like a relief in a in a sad way. Oh, that's so effed up. To I know say. that's okay, so though. effed up, but it's so true because yeah. I never, I never told anybody that that it was such a relief my dad died. Yeah, like, no, like who wants to say that? Stupid yeah, and it's better. hard for um. It's such a relief that my dad died, but it was like I was like it's finally over. Yeah, and it feels like I mean, I everyone wants their parents to fully accept like who they are and everything and it sounds like he was like a sick guy and couldn't really figure out how to deal with his sickness and you were an easy target. He was so angry because like, he he liked to drink. His cirrhosis of the liver is caused by drinking way too much. He's been drinking since he was 14. Mm-hmm. A lot and like a six packs, 12 packs a day, like two six packs a day. And he would, he would never get drunk, angrily drunk, but it just messed with them. And then he yeah. had what I, I researched it. So I know that when you drink a lot, you have something called alcoholism and your body craves the alcohol. Mm-hmm. And what needs it at some point, you're like blood, like depends on that alcohol level. So when we got to the hospital, they were like, he's fine. He's on the, the machine, the machine and, that, and they're, yeah. they're keeping him alive. But I didn't know they're just telling you that to calm you down. Once they're on that ventilator and they're brain dead and they're keeping the body alive or something like that. I don't know how it, how it goes, but mm-hmm. Then they, you know, decided like, to pull a plug, and that's yeah. when it was like real. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And then we had the funeral, yeah, the and funeral. I just tuned out at that point. Yeah. And I put everything into YouTube because I he, could finally do. I can finally be as you were like, colorful Screw it. I don't, as I, I wanted. I'm to not be. worried about being called a fag anymore by my dad. Just I can get on YouTube. I can finally and and it's. I think that's like a really powerful story because you had that realization later on that like, yeah, you do mourn this man, but in that moment, that was a struggle for you to deal with your father. I'm so angry about it. I'm so angry. I'm mad about it. That, yeah. But it happened for a reason, and I wouldn't be here, maybe, if it wasn't for him passing away. And I'm away. sure if you were to ever have children or whatever, you have a life and a partner, you're going to just be a, a better man because you went through that, yeah. you know? So. Um, the, the, the triangle stuff is because when I was doing it, like, it's so much competition on YouTube. Yeah. I wanted to stand out. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me invent a face. You, did you, I almost feel like I kind of thought it was like a mask of like protecting of who you really are to kind mm-hmm. of like, but it's not because you've kind of adopted who Like they kind of like mesh and yeah. a fusion of the two. But it's because of that. I noticed there were like so many people doing drama commentary, but not wearing makeup. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to, I want to create a look that no one has. That's not racist <laughs> look. And I was uh-huh. like. I came up with this and it started off very small and it yeah. just got bigger and that's, it's just a marketing thing and it just worked and I love it. So I think people could look at you and they would assume that you're comfortable in your sexuality and everything. Would you say that you're comfortable, you're a gay man and that's how you identify? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you came out in your early twenties, you said, or, or your late teens or I don't see the thing is I never told my, I like never told my mom became, I was gay. I never told oh, really? my dad I was gay. They just kind of figured it out, mm-hmm. you know? Maybe I, I mean that. my mom. My mom knows I'm gay, but we've never had that conversation. That still oh, now, I'm, still now, it just no. never, it Has never he, came up. Have you ever had a boyfriend? No dates, like, dating. So not a boyfriend for your mom to meet. No, like she kind of seen guys around, but yeah. they don't ever last long. Yeah, I mean, so she's more accepting than your dad ever was. Yeah, I think yeah. my dad was okay with it, but it was never like 
like a reality for him because I never mm-hmm. brought anyone over. But then he grew up in Mexico. Like he came here illegally. Like he swam the border. So oh, he yeah. had that whole machismo, yeah. masculine, toxic mindset that guys aren't supposed to do. Super like stoic. Yeah, just... yeah. So it was kind of difficult growing up in that household and trying to hide and expressing who I really am. Mm-hmm. So it seems like you've had a lot of like figuring out who you are in your life, you know, building this brand for yourself and everything. That's why I get so angry and people try to come for it. Because I'm like, yeah, this is... <laughs> Everything like YouTube is the only thing that worked out for me. Well, and you know what? There's no way that no anyone can ever take that away from you. Like no matter what, even like with the mistakes you've made so far, you've gone past that, and they may like shadow over you and stuff. But they really like in the grand Thank scheme God. of things, they don't. That means a lot for you to say that because I don't. No one ever tells me that. Yeah. To have a conversation where someone said that to me, whoa. Well, and I talk about people who on my channel typically like people who really do some really fucked up shit. So like you haven't done you've and you've taken accountability. It's like hard for me to like it's hard for not to forgive someone who has apologized and who has, you know, yeah, who's taking accountability of that. But it sounds like uh, so you've built this brand guilty you, by association. Yeah. That's what I call it for a lot of times mm-hmm. with the Jeffrey Star thing. Yeah, and and in, even like I was experiencing a little bit when I was really? talking to you just oh. by by posting you. I mean, really? people loved the pictures, really? but that's why I got some of these controversies. I just found out from the comments on my own photo, which um, wow. But, but I'm interested in like love. Do you want to like be with someone? No, like, no. I'm I'm. I always say I make too much money to be in a relationship, oh, okay. especially like in a gay relationship. Mm-hmm. Like I just I don't trust guys i feel like they're just want yeah. when i meet a guy right i'm like what do you want you want sex you want money you want yeah. clout like what is what's your what is what are you trying to get at what is yeah. your intention here and so when i meet guys is that there is an nda and there's a sexual nda oh, okay. uh, non-disclosure is it like a like, digital thing they just sign with their finger or some, something yeah like in the beginning there were actual forms but now mm-hmm. there's an nda one so if anything sexual happens like can you sign this please you yeah. are sober you're doing it under like it's yeah. gotten that bad because of well, what i've been through mm-hmm. online and if you talk about those people online, I mean, they may, someone may want to, you know, some sick fuck would want to like try to Maybe frame you in some way. But yeah. I, I just like, don't know why. And I'm not trying to offend you right now, but I can't imagine you having sex. Like, I just can't yeah. even imagine. Like, so do you like have sex a lot? Like often? Like you don't need to do spill I have it all. Sex but a lot? I mean, did you, I, have you had sex this year? Oh yeah. Okay. Like oh, a few yeah, times? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's like a thing, but like it's never with the, this on. Yeah. Yeah. It's never with, with the clown gig on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's kind of weird, but. No, I get that. Yeah, I I think well, that's not probably... weird. That's like, there's the OnlyFans. There's a category for that. You know, people yeah. like that stuff. No, but, no, no, I get that. But, but I'm... no, it, it, it's, it all comes off and I'm just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Is your name Richard? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. And it's short for Rich. That's how I got Rich yeah. Lux. Does and... anyone like, do they know your name like publicly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like yeah. my name's Michael Hooks. Yeah, my name's Richard, and then Raina last name. So oh, everyone okay. knows. It's not a. I don't. I'm yeah, not it's that not like a super secret. I mean, not, like the real I, ones will figure it out. Thing, you if know? you if you've been online as long as I have, you're gonna get called out. You're gonna get doxxed. You're gonna get exposed. You're gonna have friends come for you who are at disagreements. Like it's just it's almost like part of the the nature of the beast of being online and having any type of popularity is that people come for you and, yeah. and stuff happens and it, it just happens and for some people. They don't do that. Like it doesn't happen to them because maybe they don't show their faces or mm-hmm. they're so clean, okay, cookie cut clean. But I keep it real and I make mistakes. How do you meet these guys? Like in person or on Grinder? They usually like... hit me up on Instagram. On Instagram, like, that's in the, the best dating. They're app hit me on Instagram. Instagram. They're in the DMs. They're like, "Hey, what's up?" And they're always like liking like the the cars and the stuff. And I'm oh, like, "Oh, okay." I know what, I know do you own a like. car? Yeah. You do? How I, many? Just I have one? a pink Corvette one. Oh, wow. only how much did pink that cost Corvette. you? I think it was fifty thousand, fifty-seven thousand. Okay, so it was like, a, like, yeah, like a classic, like it's a, it's a, like the newest little model one ever. But like, oh. I got the, I, I love cars, so I yeah. got the doors lifted up, like wow. butterflies, and it's the only one in Texas, the pink one like that. But yeah, they say I'm copying Jeffrey Star, but I was like, whatever, whatever. You're just doing me. At this <laughs> you point. can't do anything without people saying you're copying somebody else. So what's your type of guy? Um, I okay. <laughs> a rich guy <laughs> yeah i mean that's everyone's type, huh but like you want no, like a more manly no, more ta- feminine tall like dark what? and handsome i Ooh, okay I, tall dark and handsome but i do prefer like a guy who has is masculine yeah but the thing is when they come around me and they see like what how i move then they kind of stop being so masculine they start holding my bag mm. or opening a door and i'm like i don't need like a bitch boyfriend i want yeah to be i already a have man. my assistant like, yeah i, I need mean... you to be a man like, do your own thing have your own job like i don't need you to help how many me assistants have you had at the most it was three when i had like that i feel like that little mental breakdown it was like three have you ever hooked up with them no i wish because some of them were kind of cute oh uh, yeah okay nice guys cute. so so james I, I think we can safely say james charles is an ear type 
No, no, no. no. But then, even it, with the BBL, even with the BBL, what I saw it in person. I yeah. saw the ass in person. Did it Rep bounce? Home. Is the it question. It was pretty big. I don't know if it bounced, but it was pretty big. So I feel like a lot of people like. Like James Charles is obviously someone who you have covered a good amount. Even oh like our friend, God. like Spill Sesh, you know, she, they cover, everyone covers. She's so lucky because oh. she doesn't show her face. You know, I'm going to have her on the podcast next week and I'm going to do it where it's just going to be cameras on me and she's going to like edit her voice and do all that. Isn't that iconic? But see, she's smart because she can maneuver through the YouTube waves and algorithm mm -hmm. without being doxxed or exposed because she doesn't like show her personal side. Yeah. So she can kind of like keep that. Anonymous. I don't even know the word. Can yeah, yeah. That? Anonymy. Or yeah. Be anonymous. <laughs> anonymous. Yeah. yeah that's so the... smart. I don't think I would do that because you can't get as many sponsors. Well, you also just, I enjoy having the relationship with people and like going out in public and having some people come up to us. It's just like, you know, it, it does. I'm not going to lie. Like it does fuel the ego and like, oh, you're rich looks. And like, oh, hi. Like yeah, picture. yes, it's I fun. am. Yeah. Especially looking at you. I mean, I feel like people, they like, if they've seen you before online, they will quickly know who you are as soon as they see you in person. But quickly, James Charles, do you have a stance on him right now at the moment? I don't, yeah. Do you hate him? No, are you going to square up with him if you see him no. in person? I would huh? like to box him, though, for fun. Oh, my gosh. Like, How the, tall is he? Do you even know? Like, but my he, height, it's about our height. Our okay, height. Yeah, equal, see, equal. Yeah, equal. Yeah. May with the new BBL, he yeah. like, weights the same, yeah. too. So now we've got, like, <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are a fair match. <laughs> well, he's more skinnier than me. I'll say yeah, that. that. So we're different weight classes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I do have, like, issues with James Charles because I don't understand how a lot of the people around him continue to still support him uh -huh. knowing that he openly said hey i was talking to underage guys and i didn't know that they were underage they didn't tell me that and to see like other influencers still support him i'm just kind of like that's so interesting because if it was anybody else you wouldn't have you wouldn't hold that same moral standard and i always say that some youtubers get away with so yeah. much and some don't and it just mind blows me how he still has a career on youtube because in hollywood well, what did he like can you explain like okay and i know that i'm i'm just like always confused like did he commit a crime didn't commit a crime. It could have been a crime, though. Mm -hmm. I remember Keemstar said, you literally committed a crime. This is true. You, So it's kind of like the Jeffree Star, it's wrong, but it's not legal, the racist thing. It's like, it's wrong, James, that you're like doing this with these young boys, well, but it's not yeah, legal. Because that is against the law yeah. to talk to underage guys. And oh, I trust. Stuff like I... that. It, it is. But he didn't go all the way yeah. with them. He was like right there. Well, then do you sometimes feel like, I mean, I talk about a bunch of predators on my channel. Like, why don't you go and talk about some like real, like ones that are actually like raped people? I think because the uh, I don't want to get demonetized, yeah. right? And then I have my own issues with being, you know, molested and stuff okay. like that. Okay, I get that. So, so it's, it's a touchy subject. Like, mm. It's not always like some people don't want to go that far too. Yeah. And I think that you also are. I try to keep it lighthearted and fun. And you're kind of you've got a theme with your channel where there are like consistent like you know stories or <laughs> yeah. figures that you talk about um, yeah. over and over again. So, do you have anything to add on James Charles though? Yeah, because if it was in Hollywood, right, there yeah. have been so many celebrities who have done a lot worse and are blackballed. Yeah. They can't get a gig. They can't get a sponsor to save their life. But James Charles somehow gets a pass. You know, that's a, that's what's so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, how how is it okay? Because some people have done a lot less and they get canceled. Yeah, and they get fully canceled. So it's just, I, I always feel like, I think that in society that we live in, some people get a pass and some don't. Yeah. Well, I think also, like, being a predator is so next level. Like, I mean, there are culture, like, culturally, if you look oh. at countries that aren't as developed, they've, if, a, if someone, like, does something to a child, they beat them in the streets, yeah, yeah. you know? Like, I've made a few jokes about the him liking underage kids as a yeah. joke. And he's DM me. Like, I didn't think that was funny. And I apologize. Is this a joke? He I'm DM'd sorry. You. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. And he said, okay, I forgive you. But I just, I kind of felt like he, from his side, from seeing it from his point of view, I think that he has apologized and is trying to make amends, but people keep bringing it up. So it's almost like the situation with me. Yeah. So it's almost like a, How do you even get on these people's radar? Like, how did he come across? Oh, you for, just made it Let enough? me just tell you. Okay. I know. <sighs> they watch videos that are made about them. Yeah, they, they do. do. When the James Charles palette came out, Every review, he was in that comment section. Thank you for liking the palette or make sure you use it this way and stuff like that. Yeah. So then so, how does how do they trust being around you, I guess? Like, that's when I'm like, how does Jeffree Star, like, I guess oh, because you were pro-Jeffree when like, you were, like, around like, okay, him. Okay, do you have your phone? Yeah, I have Okay, phone. pick up your phone. Like, okay, just a little bit close to me. So I'm Jeffree and you're me. And you're checking a Twitter or something. Mm -hmm. So Jeffree will be like... <laughs> Like, you know, like, like, I don't put your phone down. Yeah. Like when you're with beyond. me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like that. So, mm. and I think that a, a lot of. And do you respect that? Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Because you come to my house, if I don't know you, I'm like, just leave your phone at the door. Yeah. Like that. Because yeah. even though I have nothing to hide, I don't want something to be misconstrued. Mm-hmm. Like the instance with me talking in the background or stuff like that. Like I just been so effed over. You just kind of have a wall and you have to, I set these boundaries and people don't respect those boundaries. They're like, why do you have assistance? Why yeah. do I have to sign an NDA? Why do I have to do this? It's like, I've been effed over so many times. I don't want to give people a reason to come. For what me was like anymore. the NDA instance that you're fucked? Like you were screwed over that you got an NDA. Like, do you remember that? Do you even feel no, comfortable talking about that? No, it's just because I talk a lot of ish. I talk a lot of and ish then people and some of it and... is a joke. And I can see how you can say, well, Rich Luck said this. Yeah, I did say it, but it was a joke. So speaking of like jokes and everything, I remember, so you were friends with a drag queen called and correct me, Luscious Massacre? Yeah. Luscious you Massacre. Yeah. You guys have had a huge well, following out and everything. I haven't, I haven't I know. Heard, seen that person in years. I know, and that's fine. And I don't really have much to say about them, but I was listening to a clip earlier, and I know you say, you just said you talk a lot of ish, you talk, you know, you're with me, you things yeah. get misconstrued. So she, they accused you of having a phone call with Jeffrey or having a conversation with Jeffrey that you showed yeah. him and you were saying something like, was that racist that they were trying to insinuate something I don't or know. about them? First or of all, that was over like over many years ago. I don't I know. know. I don't know. But in my house, everything's being recorded because I have those cameras, those uh-huh. ring. Oh, nest. so you showed a recording from later on of like the conversation or how did Luscious come across this recording? <laughs> I probably did. You have I, Jeffrey Star in your house, recorded it, and then later on went back and looked at the footage. No, Jeffrey's never been to my house. Okay, but I think it was, uh, you know. Okay, so if I'm sitting right here and someone sends me a voice note and I play it, you can hear it. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, I get that. So yeah. Oh, okay. So do you ever get nervous, like meeting? Like, are you nervous to meet anyone you've ever talked about? Yeah, like, I'm, you. I'm nervous to meet you. <laughs> you've never talked about I'm me. Ver- I know that, but I'm nervous to meet you. Yeah. When I when we first met at the crim shop, yeah. I was like, oh, here we go again. Oh my god. I bring the drama, but drama follows me. I don't look for drama; it just follows me. Like kind of like this podcast, it just came across <laughs> you. I don't think it's been bad though. I think it's been good so far. But I Do navigate you? it. Like I, I almost, I almost got like I think first of all being canceled. I think is a social construct. Yeah, it okay? is. I, it's not real. But you can only I, cancel yourself. True. You can only unless you're a predator. Cancel yourself. Whew. And oh, wait, I'm sorry to cut you off, but yeah. So um, I can't believe you're nervous to meet me, though. It just, like, it's because I've been through so much. I'm just apprehensive about doing stuff. Yeah, I still do it because yeah. I live for it, and I love the drama. Mm-hmm. Like it's part of my brand. It's drama, but I try to keep it lighthearted. But drama follows me. Yeah, it just well, happens. And honestly, I purposely wanted to go hard on you just because I think people want to see it. But at people, the same time, I think that you you are being genuine. You're being honest and everything you've said. I don't so do many far. interviews. Yeah, because. I just don't want like people to get the wrong idea of me and I tend I'm not the best speaker. Yeah. You know, as you can see from press videos. But I'm like I don't have anything to lose. Like yeah. I've, been, I've been through so much. I've been canceled so many times. I've like people when they dig for information on you, they're gonna find it. So I feel like I've been exposed, dogs lied on so many times. So I'm just like, I'm here, man. Like what what I'm just open book. What's up? Exactly. I, I'll talk about it. With the luscious stuff, you know, I'm pretty sure like there are there are things that I did in that friendship that were wrong. And I have to own up to that and be like, what was my part in that? Okay, what can I learn from that? And and to make amends and apologize, not so much for them, but for me, so I can move on. Mm-hmm. That was a friendship that I really, I really enjoyed. Great yeah. time of my life. But I also need to understand that not all friendships can are built to last on social media. Yeah. Because it can tear down. People can easily influence in different ways yeah. and things like that. Like, why aren't y'all hanging out anymore? And y'all are totally cool, but then the, the subscribers are like, well, why aren't y'all doing this? Why aren't y'all doing that? They didn't get invited. So I can see that. So mm. and then not to say that happened in this friendship, but with other friendships, you can see, well, why is he getting sponsors and I'm not? Why is this person succeeding and I'm not? And there's yeah. like level of competition that doesn't exist there because you only compete with yourself. But I, I see that. So it sucks having online friends, mm-hmm. you know, because that happens. Yeah. And I don't want any jealousy or animosity. And yeah. yeah. And I mean, obviously, the internet can really flame it all up and make it so much worse. So it will be bigger than what it really is. So, like, how do you how do you feel like? So, for example, going back to that brand party we were at, we were there with Morgan Adams, and I'm oh, sure you've yeah. you've definitely spoken about her on your channel before. Do you just have any nerves or anything when it comes to seeing these people in person, or you know, you talk a lot about I, her brother-in-law and her, oh my her God, brother? Yeah. So, yeah, I. Do I have any nerves meeting? Yeah, I do. Was it your first time meeting her then? No, second. Okay. I met her at Shane Dawson's house. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and I was nervous to meet her. And I said, it's so enchanting to meet you. And I was like, I don't ever talk like that, but whatever. I did then, and I messed up. Mm-hmm. She probably thought it was weird. But, yeah, so when I saw her again, I, 
because she said we should collab, we should do a video, and I just uh, never took her up on it because oh it's making that cross from you talk about them now you're collabing with yeah. them, you're a social climber now, and I uh, don't want all that. I like low key want her on my podcast because she was just so. Like, I think she chill. would do it. Really? Maybe I'll, have I'll to send reach her an email because yeah. you have her number two. Well, she did follow me on DMs. Too, ah! So yeah, um, I think she'll come on if she does them. But she she's real. Yeah. She's oh, I real. could tell. And honestly, when I was around her, I felt like. And I, I don't mean this is like a bad thing, but I felt like there's a lack of like confidence so much, almost, which is like you humbling, got that you know? Vibe. Yeah, she's you just got not that the most. Yeah. And she has everything to be confident for. She looks like beautiful, she's bad good. bitch. And I just, she wasn't that confident in herself. But I think that like, she was I, like, I, I get along I'm, with those I'm, people, I'm you know? Here at this party. Yeah. What's up? She was so kind to me yeah. and so friendly and, um, Kind of spill sesh too because you know people thought spill sesh was her oh, we for can the talk longest about time. We can I mean, talk. we don't talk about who okay, spill okay. sesh is, but we know like yeah, she exists. Mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So then, do you do you think Shane Dawson is a pedophile? No, no. Oh no, no, no. Have you we, made videos uh, uh, suggesting so? Yeah, and I said that I don't think that he is. Oh, in those videos. In those videos. Okay. Yeah, I really did. Do you think he's? A uh, no. I mean, okay. I mean, I've been watching him for a long time. I think he's done some like racist stuff, obviously, with like you yeah. can't. And, and here's the thing. Another thing, being there's videos that I've done with Shane Dawson. I was like in. Remember that big, that big drama he did with Jeffrey Star, those yeah. series. I was like in every one of those. Yeah, I know. And so that was getting huge. looped in with his cancellation, Jeffrey Star's cancellation. Again, guilty by association. It's like, well, you hang out with Shane, you hang out with Jeffrey. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the where well, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Yeah. I'm just trying to be a good guilty person. by association. Yeah. Well, then, um, would you say like so? You and Shane Dawson had some type of relationship at some point. Are you guys like civil or fine? Or yeah. is there any? I feel like if I send him a text, he would text back. Okay. I just so don't. Like, I just don't want to be like a. Yeah, I mean, also it would make more sense if you were like in Colorado and just had me like, hey, you want to grab? You know, I mean, there's no real reason. Well, he's to, like, here now. And he's here in LA now. <gasps> he's filming Stop. the cop podcast. Oops, at the house. So wait, he's got a new podcast, right? That he's coming out with. Yeah. Okay. Cute. It's called Shane Dawson. I don't even know controversies or something. I don't know yeah. what it's called, but it's, called, it's on the Shane Dawson Two channel. But honestly, these these the Shanes and the Jeffries they need to like start putting in more work because like we've seen Jeffries' numbers are going down. I don't know about Shanes. I haven't really checked in with him, but he can still pull a million. <sighs> okay, he can still pull a million. That's important. It's not as much as he used to because he can pull twenty two million, fifteen million, sometimes thirty million. Yeah, but to pull one million, it's still a lot for me. Well, but one million him, is like ten thousand dollars. I usually think like a hundred thousand views <clears> is like a thousand dollars and then a million views is like ten thousand at least from what i've seen like in adsense yeah unless you have like a a bad rpm or whatever they call that CV, yeah, cvm CVM. then it'll be like eight thousand but you're around there yeah yeah so how like if you so obviously you're making money you're doing well at i mean i spent it on social media you didn't are these new mm -hmm. how new i would say less than a year oh my gosh they're beautiful wait so they're just the top and the bottom yeah 10 <gasps> on top 10 the on whole bottom. grill what'd you have before girl was it busted yeah they were it like was. it wasn't that bad it, there were them. like there were they weren't that bad but it was the comments that said oh your teeth are crooked and so i was like mm. okay well let me go get them uh, let's go get some new well, teeth. what about other like physical things that you've changed about your body because obviously weight loss has or your weight yeah. in general has been a struggle for you. Do you feel comfortable where you are right now mm -mm. with your body? I want to be skinnier. You I, be the skinny. doctor told me I have your to be Your arms skinnier. are looking like, you're looking thin. Thank like, you. That means a lot because okay. I feel, I don't feel well, thin. Well, I want to be thin too, so I get I that. I feel like I have some type of like a uh, body disorder because I, you say I look thin or I look good, but I don't feel that because I've always grown up fat. So yeah. I feel fat even when I lose weight. But when I got like a really good check on YouTube because of Jacqueline Hill and her lipstick scandal and all that stuff, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm just be, I'm gonna be real. I I went to the plastic surgeon and they did um, what they call upper body lift. So I had a belly that hung. Oh, so they cut the skin out. Three sixty though. Wow. Front oh, so back. the back too. That's and important. You gotta get the back too. Up, so that giving you a little bit of a butt lift. Uh huh. And then they sew you together. And I, I had to sit down for like a week. I couldn't. Move. I was recovering from that. Sucks. Did you, you just, just not post? No, I pre filmed. Oh no. I got off the operating table and posted. <gasps> were you still, oh, were you like, but did you film like recovering? Yeah, I filmed a little like, like video talking about the recovery, mm -hmm. but I remember sitting down, I was like, okay, we're gonna talk about today's drama. Cause you could, some yeah. of you just really couldn't breathe well when you get abdominal plasty. Yeah, um, that's a lot. But <laughs> people always ask you, how much did it cost? And I'm, I say like, well, it's how much fat do you have? Like, Oh you know? really, it's and by then, the fat. Yeah, like the doctor, the doctors consider it like an art. You know, Ooh. so they're like, you're paying for someone's artwork to cut you up and chop you together. Do you know how much fat they removed off you? I think it was 15 pounds of skin. Of skin. And of that's skin. a lot. Like skin, skins. Yeah. Wow. The doctor said, you're not fat. This is all loose skin. Like, you already mm -hmm. lost the weight. So how and did just, you lose the weight initially? Um, what's it called? Pills? Fast. 
No, I wish it was pills with Slim Fast. No Adderall? <laughs> no Adderall. Adderall will make you lose weight. I want to get on Adderall. I, I do, have it, so but I, I never take it. focus and work more. It does make you focus and work more, but it makes you overthink and oh, get depressed. I don't, oh, yeah, because then I start overthinking and I get anxiety. I do yeah. not want that. So, like, what is life like in Houston? Are you just, like, constantly keeping yourself busy? Like, can yeah. you have, like, a couple days at home where you just do nothing, no. relax, and, like, watch TV or anything? No, no, no. I feel like <laughs> I feel like um, because I f- feel like a total loser, okay? Yeah. Working at the chemical plant for all those years, I felt How like... How much are you making, like, an hour at the chemical plant? It's like, you like, 15 bucks an hour. You, so you, you can yeah. make that here working at In-N-Out. Yeah, really yeah, can. yeah. So it wasn't the greatest pay, but it was working a lot of hours. But I felt like people in my social class, like, when you, my graduating class, like, they were making more money than me and stuff like that. So I always felt like I was last. Yeah. And so when I got on YouTube and was making money, I was like, oh, I'm, a, I'm really going to succeed at this. This is the only thing that's worked for me. Uh-huh. So I was, like, driven. And you felt passionate about it. Oh, I love I love. That's how I feel, too. I love just making videos. And it's just like... Especially when you're rewarded with the views and the, and the clicks. And then you get talked about on other websites like mm-hmm. Washington Post or Huffington yeah. Post and they're like wow you feel acknowledged and you get that recognition I like that yeah and you're like finally I'm like first here and yeah I felt like I was and then always it goes last. away and you chase it again yeah and is that what keeps you kind of like hungry with like creating content and keep it going and everything not so much not so much getting recognized but what keeps me hungry is I just don't want to be a loser bro yeah yeah and I want to like be successful. Yeah. And in and being successful is just like a momentary thing. Mm-hmm. You have to keep it. Yeah, for you sure. Know? It's like this, it's like the weight loss struggle. Like I look, I may look good today, but I want to maintain it. Yeah, and it's scary. That's like, what if you part. broke a leg? Like walking out here, I because tr- then you can't walk. I kick for you a off set, days. and then you're yeah. done. Then you gain all the weight back. It's like that can it can so easily go away too. So the what triggered the weight loss was because my doctor said, Rich, you have diabetes. Do you have you, diabetes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Type two. Do you have like an insulin pump on you? No, that's type no. one. That's okay. type one. And uh, he was like, it's going to get worse if you don't diet and exercise. And I was already feeling the effects of it. Like, yeah. just like your nerves, mm-hmm. the vision, blurry vision, yeah. like shaking, um, moody, mood swings. Um, and when people used to say I had like a prickly personality back in the day, I think it was because I was like severely high blood It was sugar. like a reflection of your body blood, state uh, yeah my, bl- state. my blood sugar and not knowing what was going on with me yeah i didn't know and then ne- when it was like full-blown like it's 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 really it's a really scary disease because it, it happens slowly yeah and you start noticing things and you're like why is this happening you don't really know that it's diabetes mm. um there's like there's like sexual stuff too that happens yeah i don't want to get into that but it's so gross unless you want to like with what diabetes yeah what does it do does it make you like not get hard? Okay, or so like sometimes like your your area down there would just start hurting. <gasps> it was like a pain. Like a pain, and oh. I would go to the doctor, and I was like, I think I have an STD. Yeah. But I was like, but I had I hooked up with a condom on, and yeah, they were yeah. like, oh well, here's a penicillin, you know, take these pills, not knowing that it was diabetes that was causing the nerves to like shock. Wow. Have a pain. Like, so when I started to manage it and diet and exercise, all that just went away. Is that a common symptom with diabetes? Mm-hmm. It can okay. happen if it's severely high blood sugar. Well, you should. I know it's hard to be like proud of what you've done so far because it's like you're constantly I'm scared looking to forward. Lose it. I'm scared to yeah. lose. Yeah. But sometimes you need to like just step back and really look at it because like there's a lot of people who are so inspired by this, you know? And I do want, I just want to take a moment to say this. I never want to come up across preachy, but if something's wrong with your body, get it checked. Like there's something called an A1C. It's a test. Okay. It tell it man- manages it shows your blood sugar for the past three months. Uh-huh. And if it's above a six, then you're pre-diabetes. Oh. So mine was at a thirteen. Wow. Okay. And you're supposed to be. And at what a were six. you eating at this point to get oh this? Oh my eating, like, god! McDonald's, M&M's French fries, McDonald's. Yeah. Oh, I love. What do you get sugar. at McDonald's? Like, what would your McDonald's uh, order number back one? Then? No pickle, add mac sauce. Mm, hell yeah. That's what I get okay. right there. And then um, I noticed. Okay, let's bring this number down. So now it's at a six. I'm mm-hmm. right there, so it's good. But it's hard work because yeah. people can't bring down. And then, well, down. once you're on, once you are diabetic, it's hard to manage it. Like it's just something that's not. It's not easy because it's, it's also easy. about consuming and you Is have it to balance. Really... You have to balance because if I don't eat, then I get like jittery and blurry vision. Mm-hmm. If I eat too much, I get jittery and blurry vision. You gotta like, keep it. Mm-hmm. So that's what how I lost the weight. It's just managing what I eat, working out. Which I you work out all the time. You look so good. Oh, stop. I mean the body. It's like the, the depression body. thing. Whoa. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I've already had I've had my issues like bulimia and stuff and all that for years and years. So I'm not. Wow. I, I'm glad to see everyone like saying that I look good, but I'm also feeling like a sense of like stress about it. Like it's making me feel. You know, it's like when you lose weight. Like last year, I lost. I've already lost like 15 pounds or whatever. I was wearing a lot of like large clothing, and now I'm getting all these like rewards for like looking like this. And I'm yeah. kind of like I don't feel like I look that good though. So I feel like I need to just not eat and just keep working out. <laughs> um, so you have body dysmorphia too. Maybe oh, for bit. sure. Yeah. I mean, the, it's more alone. bulimia though, because I am very comfortable throwing up. I like, never talk about this stuff with people. Yeah. So well, I it's feel important. Like, I feel like too. you. You can relate to what I'm talking about. So I feel yeah. like nobody cares. Like t- to me, I feel like shut up. Just tell us about the drama. Oh my gosh! And I'm stop. like, wow. Someone's asking me. Okay, cool. You have no idea how long it takes me to put on like clothing and stuff just because I look in the mirror and I'm like, nope, nope. I feel nope. fat. I, I feel buy, fat. I feel yeah. fat all the time. And it's like, especially being out in even LA or, and it, or in social media. Oh my god! It's like in LA. Oh my gosh! In <laughs> Florida, I'm a ten out of ten. Here, I'm like a three out of ten. <laughs> like part of Florida though. In for in Saint Petersburg, Saint Petersburg, I'm a ten out of ten. In Miami, I'm like a two. So uh, <laughs> well, I like kissing me. Oh Kiss yeah, me, Florida. I'm like a 10, 10, 10 kiss me. Kiss me is right outside of Disney World. It's a yeah. small community. So I like how you said, like, you know, you just, you want to keep it going. You want to, you know, you don't really look at success as like a one-time thing. You've got to really build yeah. a life out of this. So is your mom proud of you? Yeah. Yeah. She likes what you do. Does she like watch your videos ever? Like, I think, yeah, she Tell does. people about it, her friends I and think stuff. She do- yeah, she does. And I, I don't feel proud that she's proud of it. Okay. It's, I, I kind of like feel her like. her approval doesn't really mean It doesn't mean anything. It does. Her okay. approval doesn't mean Neither does my dad. Yeah. Because he one time said he was proud of me. And I was like, okay, great. Because some people, they'll go to their life seeking that validation from their father, and they never got it. See, I got it, you know, one time when he was sober. Yeah. Like, a long time ago. But I think what drives me is just me. Yeah. Like, I want to, like, all the, everything that we're going through in life, it's going to be taken away like that. No one's going to remember the little beefs and drama that you have with people in a larger scale of things doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just, we're just here for a small fraction mm-hmm. and I want to laugh and enjoy and make fun of it. And that's why I like comedy and satire. Cause I just want to be remembered for like uh, that guy who made me yeah, laugh. You were entertaining and that you brought people yes. join. You're part of yes. their morning. They got up that's in the morning, listened to Rich Lux and like, that's what I, to- I want. And I, I completely relate because to that. If you can, if you can manage that, then you're forever immortal. Yeah. Cause back in the day, people build pyramids to be remembered. And like mm-hmm. nowadays it's like being, you can put on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Being remembered for, Whatever is the work that you did online, because people will always be there. Like yeah. when I, if I pass away tomorrow, this video will la- will live on forever. This, if you pass away tomorrow, we're selling this the video. The views to, you would get. We're selling this video to some <laughs> network or something. Um, and like if you like leave here and you get hit by a truck, yeah, no, we're then it won't be the podcast anymore. It'll be something else. But wait, hold on. Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have an older brother. What's he doing? In and out of jail all the time. Oh no, I'm sorry. Love him so much. Really? And I have how much younger, older is he? I think he's like forty something. Oh. He's a lot older. Yeah. Same mom and like dad or no? He has a different dad, but okay, same mom. Okay. I have a little brother who's a cop. So it's just different. Ooh, they're, wow. Yeah. So your younger brother's arresting your older brother. I'm not just kidding. That's <laughs> yeah, not trying to... No, it's true. We <laughs> yeah. joke about that all the time. And then I'm the creative one. Yeah. So that... And they're yeah, both you, straight. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. So you're like... You're, missing out. <laughs> you're obviously not a daughter, but I'm like, you're the daughter that your mom was. I'm, but there was a time in my life when I thought that I was a transsexual. Oh, really? And when was that? I, was that like... That was like... You know when you're like sneaking out as a kid, you know, like underage clubs mm-hmm. and stuff? I would I would dress up, have hair and wig. And I, around that time, I had a lot of friends that were transsexuals too. So yeah. I kind of felt like, well, if all my friends are transsexuals. I'm transsexual too. Yeah. And that wasn't the case at all. And, I, and how did you realize that you weren't? Because I was just doing it for sexual gratification, not for like, oh, I feel like a woman inside. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, but I say that people think it's so funny, but there's a lot of people who struggle with that. Mm-hmm. And I did it for like a year. I would dress struggle up. Struggle being in between almost, you know? Like yeah. Feeling I like would they're... go on dates with guys and I would be like, oh, I'm on my period and stuff. But when you're... Oh my gosh, were you fishing? Were you able to... Were you well, like... when I was younger, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have, I mean, hello, I'm not anymore. But like when you're younger and you're smaller, Ooh. you can kind of like get away with a lot. Yeah. And I did that whole thing and I realized that's not... That's not what I'm into. It's not who I am. Have you been accused of being transphobic before? Yeah. Because... Yeah. And what, in what context? What was it? Oh, it, okay. So, and dude, this was a real actual story. Was it James Charles and the nail situation? Because you were called because you said he was like a trans woman because he had yeah. nails done or something. So I'll never forget that. I was in I was in New York making my little drama videos in my hotel room, uh-huh. and I said, "Hey, 
look at these pictures that James Charles is posting. He's dressing up more, not in drag, yeah. but very feminine as a woman, and he's doing a lot of nails now. Now he has nails all the time. Yeah. But back then he was like doing it. It was new. I was like, I think he might be trans. Mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, I don't know. I got, I got canceled for that. Really? Because so I got they, canceled for did that. Did they feel like you were maybe outing someone who could be trans? Or like why? Or you're, because I mean, for someone it's who's that, been around the trans so people right. for so long. You're like, so right. The people were saying, oh, you outed James Charles. I'm like, how? He doesn't even, yeah. this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. And again, I get too comfortable talking on camera and I just keeping it real. I'm like, hey, he's doing all this yeah. stuff. Whatever. But I, I, I got counsel for that. And then nowadays, I see regular people commenting the same thing in today's time. Yeah. Like, underneath his, like, is he trans now? Because he's doing this more mm. and more and more. And, and now, you're like, when I asked. When I, I asked, oh, I got, my, there were videos that were made. And that yeah. lady's not even on the YouTube anymore. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Um, someone who made a video about you doing that? Yeah. No. I read, honestly, I probably, I think I read that on, like, your, one of your wiki yeah. YouTube thingy pages. And yeah. it was like, it was like, why does he think that um, but James then, is trans, but then but Jeffrey, Jeffrey has, Star these has the nails? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think because Jeffrey Star has admitted like, hey, I'm a guy. I like men. Has been very, I guess, forthright with who yeah. he is. And James Charles kind of like straddles the fence, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But well, I met James Charles we were... in person. I mm -hmm. met him in person. I thought he was going to sue me. So I was making drama videos about him. And then I saw him at a Morphe event. And I was like, oh, he's going to sue me. And then he said, rich mother effing loves. <laughs> like, yeah. And we took a picture. But I was like, whoa. Have you ever gotten a cease and desist? Yeah, I think I told you, yeah. Wait, I don't remember who, though. Who said yeah, I don't want to talk about it. That's fine. Is it someone on social media? Or is it a company, a brand? It's fine. I mean, you don't yeah, have to Yeah, it's good. Because you know, it's different when a brand comes after you. and then The a brand, influencer. yeah. Not, not ever like a YouTuber, but like yeah, brands. Yeah. And you say something negative about a brand that's not true. Yeah. And I have to take the video down. Wait, was this, this wasn't like, was this old? Oh, like, do you, do you know Jake Yancey? Yes. He was sued on his 18th birthday for like $5 million by this by beauty who? company. I can't remember oh the name. If I heard it, I would probably remember. But I remember that. And a bunch of other drag queens were sued. And now too. I went to his YouTube channel. It's like gone. Well, he, he does um, Deep Dive now. Like, which is another oh, channel. Yeah. It was so really I, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I text, I actually, I'm hiring to like, hopefully help make the visuals for he's this really one. He's really good. Yeah, he's, really, he's good. really great. And the work he did with the Beyonce stuff is amazing. The Beyonce, Britney. Britney. So yeah, I want to offend the, the stuff, community. I was going to say. <laughs> Wait, so who's like your big favorite, like most favorite like uh, pop singer? Do you have one? I like Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa? Just the music. I like that. Da, da, I like that. The, the yeah. techno, the dance music. Mm -hmm. I like that. Do you feel connected to your Spanish culture at all? Like, do you like Spanish music? No. I don't you feel, speak Spanish? I, si hablo español mucho. Con oh, okay. mucho, mucho amor. I, oh. I don't feel like I'm Hispanic enough. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm Puerto Rican enough. I don't feel like I'm Mexican enough. I always struggle with that, too. I honestly wasn't too sure, like, what your ethnicity was. Well, yeah. See, look, if I, if I jump out of a pickup truck, they think I'm Mexican. <laughs> oh, if I jump God. out of a Range Rover G-Wagon, they think I'm Persian. Yeah. That's just the th <laughs> I could, if you said you're half black, I wouldn't have, like, I would have been like, okay. Yeah. I mean, at this day, it's, like, so, like, The everyone's, thing is, like, when I was getting accused for being racist, I could have said, oh, I'm half black. But I want to be real. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's not the case. Yeah, and it seems like your entire career has been... Um, you not only figuring out yourself, but just kind of like authentically going through your life, whether it's you in those moments of like, you know, the surgery or it's these drama heavy moments that are iconic that you stay with. Before we wrap up, I want to talk to you a little bit about your vlog. Um, That's like a passion project. Do yeah. people, are you comfortable talking about like the reality of oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, I, so, I, I told you Sloan, oh, like off camera guys, I said I'm a hundred open book. Yeah. That, Whatever you want to ask, I feel calm. That so the vlog is like not real. Yeah, it's not real. And I was inspired by the hills. Yeah, and I love it. I mean, I've been watching them. I'm <laughs> eating it up. I, at first, I thought it was real, but then there was this moment that was just too good. And I was like, this <laughs> motherfucker is like scripting this whole thing. And I actually, I talked to, I have like a team of people I work with, and we were going through our outline and what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. And like, that was one of the questions they're like, can you ask him? Like, because a lot of people, I guess, they feel bad for the boyfriend figure because he's getting like a lot of hate on him. Yeah, hey, yeah. What's his but, name? It's Marcus. 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 Yeah, the yeah. thing from it, Marcus, yeah. Oh my gosh. Wait, so are you friends with him in real life or do you just hire him as like an actor? Me and Marcus, uh, we hooked up in real life. Oh my god. We hooked up in real life yeah. and like it wasn't weird. Like, you know, sometimes Did you, you ever have a fling or was it just like a, a hookup? It it's like a little so bit Marcus of a slid in my DM. Okay. And I and I was like, hey, I'm in Las Vegas. I'm bored. Can I fly you out? He said, yeah. So I sent him a, a NDA, you know, stuff like that. He signed it, flew him out. We had a great time in Vegas. And then I flew him back. 
and he wasn't weird about it. He wasn't like, how come you're not texting me? I'm yeah. not calling me. And he you was, found that attractive? Yeah, you're like... He was just really cool about it. And then yeah. we did a music video together. I hired him to be on set. We did the music video. He was cool about that. Paid him for that. And then I was like, hey, I want to do this reality show. I don't know where it's going to go. But yeah. You want to do it? He's like, yeah, sure. And then he just played a role in it. And does, do you think he's comfortable getting the hate that he's I, receiving? I told him in the beginning, I'm like, look, you even being around me, yeah. you're going to get people like, why are you hanging out with Rich Lux? Did yeah. you know X, Y, and Z? And you're going to get hate. And he's like, I don't care. Have you checked in with him since it's come out, though? And been yeah. like, and he's okay. He's, he's doing he okay. He loved it. He's like, I can't believe the amount of he's eating it attention up. I got. He's yeah. like, look, he was showing me like the messages and DMs. So he's loving the attention from it. Are you yeah. paying him anything or is he just a part of this? He's paying for him, yeah. Okay, cool. It's a paid gig. You know, yeah. I feel like you got I'm not. I'm not Todrick Hall. I want to pay people for their work. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to the rest of your vlog. Yeah. And uh, how many are out right now? I think two or three. Right? Two. Two. Okay. Two, how many yeah. are you gonna do total? I don't know. Yeah. I'm honestly just doing it like to, to a way to express myself. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds. And I like that. This is kind of like a passion project for yeah, me as well. I, I it's do nice that. To do those. You I, know. I'll I'll do a documentary movie one day, and then I won't for a couple years. And I'll yeah. do like a reality show, and then I won't for a couple. Years. I, yeah. The, the drama's been consistent. Well, maybe we'll see you on some reality TV. Oh now. yeah. A little Ooh. exclusive. <laughs> I saw the receipts. I saw, so. Yeah, that's cool. Well, which, I want to say the only drama channel to do that. Yeah. Well, so, I yeah. think I that's think it huge. would shake up some stuff. So. Oh, they're gonna get mad. Oh they're gonna gosh. get mad. Everyone's gonna be so mad. They're gonna message the network. Can you believe Can that you, he I, did I, this X, Y, and Z? And I feel like that follows any huge creator. Yeah. Like, anyways, it sucks. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I want to say thank you for having me on. Yeah. It. I mean, out of it just means a lot. Well, like, thank you thank for you. coming and being a good sport about it because I was like, is he going to walk out? Because I'm, I like to be tough, but also I'm reasonable and, you yeah. know, and I think it's nice it's to be fair. around like minded. It's fair. You're fair because if you, if it was all like, oh, mm, I love you so much, people aren't going to be so in tune to it. But yeah. you, it was fair. Well, it was also really just get to, uh, good to get to know you. And I think there are still people who are now just, you know, finding you on the internet and they don't know a lot of history or know who yeah. you are. And I think. You're humble. You've got a background that even people can look at you and they may not be like, I can't relate to that person. Everyone can relate to you in different ways. And I think that that just should be the forefront of like who you are because, yeah, it's you've got this all going on and maybe it's a lot. Yeah. But at the same time, you have so many stories about your past that oh some people God. are like, I can't believe this person <laughs> was that person. And that's inspiring, you yeah. know? I have lived the life of a million kings and yeah. sometimes queens. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. You guys can go and follow Rich Lux on YouTube. You can go and talk, uh, I mean, uh, follow him on Instagram. Don't talk to him, actually. Don't talk to him and don't stalk him, okay? None no, of that. I like that. But okay. um, anything else you want to shout out? Just, no, I want to say a thank you to our sponsor. Hold on. My sponsor, <gasps> oh, my gosh, yes, sponsor. My sponsor oh wanted my me to give you this. It's their brand new moisturizer that Wait, came is out. Is this the... Um... The, the Ebu Beauty. Yes, I'm so excited. I the, like literally need this. The CEO wanted me to give this to you. He was very kind. To yeah. You. Really nice he, guy. He put, I think, three, four million dollars into this skincare brand. Well, he worked for a big like skincare brand for a long time, he right? Left it, he left it all. Wow. And started his own skincare. So... And he was like, if you can please give this to Sloan, yes. we love him. And I was like, here oh you go. Oh my gosh. Yes. So, I'm yeah. so excited. Oh, Especially it gets so dry out here in Hollywood. Yes. And I'll be out here until November. So yeah, you definitely need to tell me when you're back in town again when do you okay. leave i don't have a return date no i really don't i come oh, out you haven't here. left or when do you go back to houston i don't have a return date are you staying at a friend's house yeah who's Just, your friend i'm saying drag queen? An anaheim saying Anna. yeah what's drag queen the, what's her name again she was so pretty with the purple hair I mean, you don't have to say it, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's, she's, like, down, down low, stuff like, you know, yeah, doesn't want to meet But, like... Well, she had a good amount of followers, I thought, right? Yes. She, she totally um, lives near Anaheim. Yeah, yeah. So, we go to Disney every day. I've never been to Disney. I'm a Disney gay. I've I never been once in my life. Disney gay. Yeah. You, you live in, like, in Florida? You never quit? I went one time this year. I went to the, one of the Disney things, and it was the worst experience. Which ones you go to? Um, Disneyland, Epcot Disneyland. or something. Okay. And I went with a horrible guy that was like super abusive and nasty. And like, I was crying the entire oh. time. It was raining the entire time. My shoes were like ruined. And we drove two hours to get there. It was horrible. Oh. I ended up getting extremely wasted at a, like a tequila bar, way too drunk. And then I was just like crying. Over, and yeah. it was like, uh -huh. it was like, do Disney with me. There's a way to do Disney. A way to do Disney. Oh, I've There's seen you do it. There's a way to do it. Yeah. I need to do it. Well, now it you looks come like, with me. I, I take care of everything. It looks like yeah. we have some future plans now. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rich, for coming onto my channel. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you leave your thoughts and check us out on social media. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.